The outpouring of grace is amazing. I tell you, when you suffer this uh, mortal existence as a mortal and suffer this human, the grace of God becomes more apparent. You know, the more we suffer, the more we recognize grace and realize the grace of God that comes with, with it. In the sense of coming through it, God gives His grace, which is sufficient for us. Um, that's a tough one for someone to grasp, but once you realize that more and more, you can see that grace is solid. And uh, it brings us through the trials of this life, which is so awesome. Without grace, how would we survive this wicked eon? Think about it. Without grace, we could not survive this mortality and this wicked eon. The pressure's there. I even said it to Brother Leo when we had fellowship the other day. You can feel the pressure of the world on you. No matter what you do. I went to the grocery store with my wife this morning. I didn't go into the grocery store. I sat in the Jeep. But I'm watching all these people come out. Every single one of them got a mask on. And it's just like, ugh. Can we please be over with this? It is just... It's sickening. It makes the world even sicker when you view it. You can sit there, see that they are sick, even though they're wearing masks. They're even sicker because they're wearing masks, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I've been watching uh, the series that Martin Zender's been doing, and it is powerful. It is tremendous. He exposes those teachers that are just so into the kingdom. Like, that was something this morning. And I remember the guy, the Kissinger guy, or whatever he put up the video. I watched one of his videos, and I had to turn it off, literally, because it, it irritated me. In spirit, it irritated me. Because he's focusing so much on the kingdom and Israel's lot on the earth. Like, doesn't he realize, like, members of the body of Christ are called off this earth? We're called to the celestial realm? Like, it's unreal. So, you know, I appreciate Martin expounding upon it and exposing the false teaching. Because that's what's important. We, are, we need to be there to expose, too. Martin does a great job in exposing people that are teaching falsely. And I love that. I do mostly reading on my shows. But, uh, like I said, on Friday, I think it was, or Saturday, my focus is more towards our allotment, our expectation among the celestials, because that's where the enjoyment of the allotment is. You know, if we're focused on shit on this earth, and all this crap weighs you down, well, that's no good. You know, God gives us His grace, yes, to get through it. But our focus mostly should be on the celestial realm and our allotment being called to the celestial realm, our expectation. What is an expectation? It's not mortified. I said it before, expectation is not mortified, meaning it is not dead. No matter whether we are dying, our outward man is decaying, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Meaning, our expectation is alive by the Spirit of God that's in us. So that is vibrant and alive, the Spirit of God. It's not mortified. Alright, I'm going to continue on with 1 Corinthians uh, 16, the Concordant Commentary here today. And it does go into the word anathema. And Martin used that on the video, which is awesome because it explains it. Explains it pretty clear in the concordant commentary here. All right, let's get going. When Paul received the recognition of James, Cephas, and John, they asked him to remember the poor among the circumcision. Galatians chapter 2, verse 10. At this time, the nations were partaking of Israel's spiritual things. Romans 15, 27. It was not till later that they became joint partakers joint partakers, meaning the nations, Israel, there's no distinction, no male, no female, any of that in the body of Christ. So they became joint partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 3, verse 6. So they made such return as they could by collecting a contribution. Paul was delivering this money to the saints in Jerusalem when he was imprisoned. Acts 21, 18, and chapter 22, verse 21. Now we partake of our own spiritual things, for we have all spiritual blessings among the celestials in Christ, where Israel has none. Their allotment is on the earth. Paul's delay in going to Corinth is fully explained in the second epistle of the Corinthians. He wished to give them time for repentance or a change of mind. Besides, he was meeting with, with much success, for, for even his enemies acknowledged that not only in Ephesus, 
but in almost the entire province of Asia. This Paul influences a considerable throng or crowd. A throng is a crowd of people. Timothy had been sent to Macedonia, Acts chapter 19, verse 22. He was young, young in the faith and young as a human being. He was sent for this mission. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, and could not command the respect with age which age inspires, because he was young, young Timothy. It was evident that Paul was not jealous of Apollos, though some in Corinth had made him the head of their faction. Neither was Apollos inclined to take advantage of their schism. He was a scholarly man, or scholarly, scholarly man meaning he was versed in the scriptures rather than eloquent he wasn't that eloquent none of us are when we do our shows here we're not eloquent or fancy or pretty we don't put a fair face in the flesh as Martin would say and he did say on his last few shows putting your fair face in the flesh looking good as you look well we don't look that way we're not putting on a fair face in the flesh we're giving out truth and heralding the evangel who had been taught by Paul's friends, Priscilla and Aquila, and had gone to Corinth after Paul had left, left being especially successful in co confuting the Jews, publicly exhibiting through the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Uh, verse 23 of 1 Corinthians 16. Maranatha is usually interpreted as the or our Lord cometh. It's a call down of judgment, Maranatha. Same with Hallelujah. It's a call down of God's judgment. In accord with the Syriac version, but it seems far-fetched to find a foreign expression here, whether it be Chaldee or Syriac. When the Hebrew furnishes a simpler and more agreeable solution, the Hebrew, as in Malachi 3.9, Cursed are you, calls down the curse of God when you say Maranatha was probably the common phrase in which the anathema or doom was pronounced. Anathema. The change of M into N is a frequent occurrence in, when the Hebrew is turned into Greek. The Syriac version was simply in, to insert the Hebrew without translating. In which the case it should not in which case it should not receive a Syriac signific signification or signification. The Hebrew Gaharam or G H A I H R A M and the Greek word anathema are used for one another in the Septuagint and the Hebrew scriptures. Both mean to devote to destruction, to doom. Leviticus twenty seven, twenty nine through twenty twenty seven twenty one through twenty nine Joshua chapter 7 verse 1, 15, 1 Samuel chapter 15 verses 1 through 20. In these passages it is rendered destroy, devote, accursed, etc. The same form of the expression as a repetition in a familiar tongue is found in the phrase Abba Father. Mark chapter 14 verse 36, Romans 8, 15 and Galatians 4, 6. Moreover, the coming of the Lord is never set before us as an act of judgment, but as a, the culmination of grace. That blessed expectation could never be used as an, as an imprecation. It brings grace, not judgment. Notwithstanding all their failure and their many shortcomings, Paul invokes the grace of Christ and assures them of his own love which he poured out on them in lavish measure. As we find in the next epistle, he was a living example of the love which does not lapse. Okay, so that ends 1 Corinthians in the Concordant Commentary. And I might just go into 2 Corinthians, why not? You know, you might as well follow up here. You know, I think, uh, I thought I was done with it, but never mind. People are appreciating it. They're loving what I'm doing here. So that's why, I'm a bring, that's why I'm bringing it. So with that, I will say, Happy Monday! <laughs>